Another big revelation that became a sort of turning point in Liars Club, um, my mother was extremely difficult. She was very beautiful and very high strung and she was, she was 80 years old and if you open the door, there was an old man who fell in the house trying to marry her. You could lower her naked into the tundra and there would be some man there peeling off $100 bills trying to do stuff for her. It was just the most uncanny thing. And, and uh, she was mean mouth and sorry and didn't give a rat's ass. And somehow these men just fell all over themselves all her life getting at her. Um, and all my life I had this idea that my, she had really broken my father's heart and he had been so heartbroken by her. And um, at the end, at, in my 20s, I finally confronted her and I was like, Mom, why did you have this breakdown? What happened to you? What happened to you that you would try to kill your children? I mean, what? What, what were you thinking? And uh, she had had two children taken away from her when she was a young mother and had lost these children and had been a completely estranged and scorned by her community and by her family and had gone off to New York to become a painter and had this awful loss. And it was so weird and she said two sentences that day that totally changed the way I looked at her. I said, Mom, why didn't you just tell us this? You know, I mean, we obviously went, I hired a Pinkerton detective and we found these two kids and they came and it's her whole life changed and she got sober and everything was very, it's like on the, not exactly like the Disney Channel, but almost like that. I said, why didn't you just tell us this? And she said, one of the saddest things a grown woman could say to her daughter, she said, I was afraid you wouldn't like me. And I, and I said to her that same day, I said, I don't understand why daddy stay with you. You were always so unhappy. You are such a pain in his ass. Why did daddy stay with you? And I thought it was going to be, oh, he loved me so deeply and he was so passionate for me. And she said, he felt sorry for me. And something about that, you know, every now and then you'll hear some just had the dull thud of truth in the middle of my chest. And I thought, oh my God, he had all the power in a way in the relationship. He was doing this because he felt bad for her. She knew she'd lost these kids. So for me, writing a memoir involves finding those deep revelations and deep mysteries that really, you know, when I wrote The Art of Memoir, it, it was partly to celebrate a genre that I've been reading and writing about and teaching, you know, for 40 years. And partly because I think that what I do when I write a memoir is what anybody who leads an examined life does, right? As you're trying to reconcile what happened in your past and trying to see you're feeling all this stuff, you're trying to stay married to somebody or date somebody or be somebody's sister or brother or husband or father or whatever, and there's all this other stuff, you know, ricocheting around inside you and trying to reconcile those things somehow always becomes the core of whatever book it is I've finished. Oh,